Welcome to another Power BI report presentation by Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to touch on a relatively complex topic that any global business has to deal with, foreign exchange risk management. The way that a firm manages their foreign exchange risk can depend on a number of things. It depends what currencies they're exposed to, uh, their appetite, uh, to hedge their exposures, the timeframes with which they want to uh, manage their exposures, and, and, and more, um, compliance, auditing, etc. The report here is going to show a, how a relatively complex corporate topic can be made extremely intuitive, um, and the analysis of, analysis of it can be um, made almost in real time, which is quite revolutionary in terms of um, you know, financial functions. Um, the ability to extract huge amounts of information, um, not only from global markets, but also um, internal, internally created data like uh, hedging information, um, security, securities used, also benchmarking, etc. So we'll go as we go through this demo. You'll see how consolidating all that information into one package report. Uh, can add enormous value to uh, the finance operation of uh, an, an organization. So the report is divided uh, into six parts. First of all, we have the hedging profile. Then we go into detail around uh, hedges being placed and who they're being placed with, the achieved foreign exchange rate that an uh, organization is likely to achieve through time, and then further analysis on who the organization or corporate is trading with, um, and some analysis on credit risk as well. The example here is based on an importer, an importing organization based in New Zealand. The organization has three, four different subsidiaries up here. And what we can do in the report is actually uh, slice uh, the data based on which subsidiary we want to look at. We can look at it from a group view, and, but we can also look at it from look at it from a subsidiary view. The FX hedging profile signifies or shows how an organisation can set a benchmark level that they might want to hedge to based on future forecasts or purchasing that they they may need to make in US dollars, and then throughout time they can hedge to that benchmark. And as you'll see, it's so it's incredibly intuitive to or, or easy to get down into the detail that you want. So, for instance, we, we want to look at one of our subsidiaries and what they've hedged. We can see we can see it summarised by financial year, and then every month through time. Also, all of our key metrics that we want to look at um, automatically update. So, for instance, how much we've hedged based of, based upon our entire uh, forecasting, and then what achieved rate um, we. Will currently are currently are forecasted to achieve based on the hedging that we have done and what and the hedging that we have not done versus the market, and then so so on and so forth. Um, and say we wanted to narrow down into a certain financial year and forecast, okay, what what, what is our potential total cost uh, in New Zealand dollars based on the forecasted achieved rate that we might get in that financial year? So this is really great stuff that. Uh, is going to make executive level decision making a hell of a lot um, easier if you can sort of forecast uh, what, what your total costings uh, will be. And what you could also do on top of this is build some scenario analysis around if uh, forecast purchases increase or decrease, what is that going to do to uh, the total costs of uh, those purchases in our, uh, in our home currency? Hedging analysis just looks at historically through time when when were trades done and who were they who were they done with which counterparties were used. So we can narrow into any of the key counterparties we have here. Um, these are a list of um, of banks, and again we can cruise into each subsidiary, narrow down into specific months, then look at say one counterparty. Incredibly um, uh, intuitive in terms of getting down to the nitty-gritty of what what you actually want to see in your data. 
um, and it's so easy to, to flip between all your subsidiaries and, and get a look at you know when they're actually trading you could you know, compare this to actual exchange rate data and see if they're optimizing their 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 hedging um, versus the market achieved rate analysis so this is what you would want to look at and uh, if you wanted to analyze okay where historically have we hedged and then in the future um, forecasting what rate are we going to achieve in the future this is going to be this is, a, this is a great piece of analysis that you could you know, monitor on a weekly or a monthly basis. And again, um, you could be talking, you'd be in a head office and talking to, to your subsidiaries and saying, uh, okay, we forecast your uh, achieved rate um, for financial year 17 you know, to be um, this, uh, th these metrics. So 65 or um, so that's, that's just for forwards, but if you want to look at total, so 68. So you know that that's some really powerful analysis that um, not only not only just looking at it from a historical basis but also looking at it from um, we have forecast or future what's going to happen in the future. Hedge timing sometimes you want to know um, for a particular time frame when did you actually place these hedges? Uh, when did you put on hedges for your for each specific? subsidiary and and um, down here we have some analysis on what 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 was the rate at that time as well um, we can dive into you know, granular detail in terms of in a particular month when did you actually hedge that particular month because when you're actually hedging as a corporate you're always hedging forward um, so when you get to um, a certain period in time and say six months you might want to look back and from an auditing perspective and understand okay well we actually hedged uh, the this month six six to twelve months ago and the and the exchange rate was was vastly different at that time here we can dive into who we're trading with um the count the counterparties with which we're trading with and analyze you know why are we trading with some counterparties more than others is it because their pricing is better um is it because is it relationship driven and what we can also do is see through time how that's changed as as those certain um, scenarios or metrics change through time and also again we can look at you know is there a difference between our subsidiaries these subsidiaries might be offshore subsidiaries so they may actually be trading with totally different counterparties than um, what you ordinarily would in your local currency Credit risk, this is you know, another extremely important one that you want to be able to analyze almost on a live basis. You want to understand what's your exposure to your counterparties or to your banks or to your brokers. Um, and if uh, that exposure is getting too large over a certain time frame, you want to make sure that you can uh, manage that or reduce that in some, in some cases. So again, it's so easy just to then navigate to say subsidiary exposure or just look at one particular um, you know one particular counterparty and see where where are your exposures um, on your hedging contracts uh, to, to these counterparties and you know that that sort of live information or, or, or live analysis is going to put the put your organization in, in, in a much better place to manage your financial risk okay thanks a lot